What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at it again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 most insane things wrestling companies did for the money. Now, wrestling is it's it's cool to entertain us fans, and the passion behind it is is great. You know, having these wrestlers trying to prove they're the best in the world to everyone around the world, it's awesome. But it's a business at the end of the day. And there are times where WWE and other wrestling companies have kind of, I guess you could say, took the money over the creativity or took the money over the wrestling itself. Um, the one noticeable moment I can think of that, guys remember during the pandemic era, tough times, uh, where I believe it was Damian Priest versus The Miz in like this zombie lumberjack match and the match was per uh was supposed to promote uh the movie with dave batista i think it was army of the dead or something like that but it was a zombie movie that featured you know dave batista and they had some type of collaboration where they literally had a match with zombies as the lumberjacks i'm sure they got paid good money to put that match on but it was awful god awful so we're going to check out some of those type of instances i'm not sure if this is going to be on this list i would be surprised if it wasn't because that was a instance where wwe i'm sure got a pretty penny to promote the movie per se but it was just awful so let's get right into this one appreciate all love sport let's do the damn thing Look, everybody understands that wrestling is a business, and businesses want to make money. However, it is still astonishing to check out some of the insanity top promotions throughout history have booked just so a movie studio, band, wow. fast food restaurant, or soft drink spews some delicious dollars into company coffers with a handshake and a smile. I am Gareth from What Culture Wrestling, and here are the 10 table? most insane things Wild. wrestling companies did for the money. Number 10, Scooby-Doo backs up Sin Cara. First, the pro wrestling tag team you never asked for. Live nope. on the 24th of March 2014 episode of Raw, WWE had someone don a <laughs> Scooby-Doo costume and ride to Sin Cara's rescue. Poor Damien Sandow had to treat the mascot character as if a cartoon dog had come to life. It was silly and it was over the top, but old Scoob did get a pop from the live crowd at least, so that's <laughs> something. Still, it's wild to look back on approximately nine years later. WWE <laughs> has produced several crossovers with Scooby and uh -huh. the gang over the years, but they they've mostly been animated movies and things like that. Here, the mutt with the most was hanging around with somebody who'd likely fall over and botch the search for bad guys posing as ghosts or monsters. Scooby and Kara even showed up in the mystery machine, which was actually a really nice touch. Which of is course, cool, the but... only mystery was why the Sing Kara gimmick got such a long run in WWE after his totally crap start. Number nine, Rick Stein. That's funny, bro. Scoob's out there helping Sing Kara in a match. <laughs> Feuds with Chucky. The 12th of October 1998 episode of WCW's Monday Nitro will forever go down in history as the night tough guy pro wrestler Rick Steiner threatened to beat Chucky the Doll's little horror movie ass. Bonus points go to absolute pro mean Gene Oakland for acting like Rick versus Chuck might be Halloween Havoc's next main event. His facial <laughs> expressions were on point. Anyone who thinks Vince Russo produced the worst WCW content ever needs to fire up the WWE Network or Peacock and relive this awkward moment. Chucky's banter, he was there to promote upcoming movie Bride of Chucky, was pre-taped for the big screens. So Steiner and Gene had to time their responses as Rick probs weighed up a steel cage challenge for the oh next pay-per-view. It would not have been outlandish for WCW to attempt some sort of match between the pair, let's be honest. In fact, it's a bit of a surprise they didn't have someone in a Chucky <laughs> outfit take some Steiner line. Talking shit to t uh, Chucky while you're in a wrestling ring is wild behavior, bro. <laughs> or suplexes on TV. I would have definitely paid to see that. Number eight, Kiss Demon equals WCW main eventer. Here's something so WCW it hurts. Originally, <laughs> Eric Bischoff reportedly toyed with the thought of a Millennium Bash that it include a wrestling show and a Kiss concert. It was ambitious, but mm. plans changed and WCW cut a deal with Gene Simmons and the band to introduce a brand new main eventer themed on his demon persona in late 1999. Yeah, I think Journeyman I Pro. This. Dale 
Torborg was cast in the role, and he did his best with it. Hilariously though, WCW's promise to make the demon a main event superstar mm -hmm. fell flat. The company pulled the wool over Gene's eyes here by promoting matches as special main events, but booking demon on the undercard anyway. The yeah. idea didn't catch on or last long, but the kiss demon was actually brought out of storage by Impact earlier this year. <laughs> because what's old is new, I guess. Number 7, WWE stars threaten the Muppets. You're still waiting for that mixed tag pitting Jack Swagger and Vicky no. Guerrero versus Not Kermit the it. Frog and Miss Piggy, aren't no. you? WWE was obsessed with drafting in celebrity guest hosts mm -hmm. to appear on Raw between 2009 and 2010, and the concept continued beyond that, but not every single week like it did for around 12 months back then. By all accounts, the Muppets weren't actually the worst guests, but they did provide some strange moments on the 31st of October 2011 <laughs> flagship. Seamus and Beaker were called family members, Animal played stand-in timekeeper by furiously hammering the ring bell, and then there was that standoff between Kermit and Swagger that surprisingly topped anything from Jack's dreadful world title run. Cross-promoting with the Muppets and having burly wrestlers shout at small puppets was certainly a choice. Number 6. <laughs> Non-fan Jeremy Piven is not prepared. In hindsight, a lot of these are just cringe. But once again, cringe to us audience, us, us fans, don't mean a damn thing when you're getting paid millions to do said cringe. I'm pretty sure a lot of us would produce or do some of the same cringe stuff if we're getting paid millions to promote it. So it's kind of that trade off. This was absolutely unacceptable. It yeah. perhaps says everything that the Muppets were better prepared for a spot on WWE programming than Jeremy Piven or fellow guest host Ken Jeong. They mm -hmm. doubled up to promote their upcoming movie, The Goods Live Hard, Sell Hard, on the 3rd of August 2009 edition of Raw. And it was a complete and utter car wreck. Fans yeah. were already tired of the guest host idea just a month or so in by the time Piven and Jeong hit the scene. Ken's OTT comedy style looked embarrassing in front of an audience who didn't mm -hmm. pay to see him. Then Jeremy went and messed things up by calling upcoming pay-per-view yep, SummerSlam the Summerfest. The Summerfest. Oh. These were some dark days, y'all. The weekly celebrity guest host. Oh, my. Like, GM. Like, that shit was dark times, man. Dark times. John Cena had to step in to correct him as fans booed, and it became crystal clear that WWE hadn't prepped Piven for his role at no. all. Of course, he should have done some homework himself, but it was cringeworthy to realize that the company hadn't exactly been hands on here. Awful. So let's just hope Paramount Pictures paid well, eh? Number five, Shawn Michaels equals KFC's Colonel. This image here is probably how <laughs> WWF fans in 1995 thought Shawn Michaels would look during his retirement tour in 2023. It's actually HBK as the Colonel of KFC. FC fame. He was dressed like that so the fast food restaurant padded company bank accounts with a healthy wedge of moolah at SummerSlam 2017. Keep in mind that this daft nonsense <laughs> happened before Sean returned to rings for a disastrous bout in Saudi Arabia uh, the yeesh. following year. So the first real glimpse fans had of Michael striking his familiar poses in years happened as he cosplayed a chicken restaurant's mascot. This wasn't the first time KFC had paid WWE megabucks to promote their food either. Dolph Ziggler also played the part in 2016. But Michaels is more memorable. They brought their boy out of retirement to cosplay as the, as, as the KFC man, bro. Well, because, well, Sean was retired and people were desperate to see him wrestle yeah, again at the time. It made Rick sense. Flair was apparently earmarked for the gig at first, but health problems prevented that, so HBK did some <laughs> posing and folks awkwardly applauded whilst hating on corporate shilling. Number yeah. four, Mountain Dew sponsors Bray Wyatt's first mm -hmm. match back. Money talks, baby, and it shouts down WWE's better instincts. They had to know that promoting Bray Wyatt's first match back at the 2023 Royal Rumble as a Mountain Dew special was a bad idea. Idea. The yeah. soft drink company were willing to pay up though, and that's why yep. Wyatt versus LA Knight, yeah, became a pitch black match. What did that mean? Well, the lights were dimmed and everything was soaked in neon flare to make it resemble a can of the dew. Yes, yes, Bray. That's literally what it was. That's all it was. Uh, I would have preferred it not been that, um, but um, they were throwing WWE too much money to not do it, I'm sure. I'm sure. Maybe they could have did it a little bit differently, but they they wanted the pitch black part of it because of the pitch black drink. I get it. It just it looks 
It looked cool, but it didn't make sense. That's all I'm gonna say. His first major match since returning the prior October was turned into a break. hollow advertisement for some soft drink. Worse, the spectacle flat out sucked and seemed to turn Wyatt into a neon drenched version of his old fiend offshoot. Yeah. The whole thing lasted around five minutes, bell to bell, was a struggle to watch for those live at the Rumble and didn't really do much of anything for Bray or Knight. A bizarre no. decision for what would ultimately be the last ever televised in-ring match fans mm -hmm. would see from the late great Wyatt. Number three, WCW has Robocop save Sting. Wrestling traditionalist <laughs> and he who loves touting college sports, Jim Ross, must have thought he'd gone to industry hell when he shouted, here comes Robocop at WCW's <laughs> Capital Combat 1990 pay-per-view. The Robocop. unstoppable crime fighting machine's second movie was set to come out one month after the show. So he rocked up to the DC armory and saved Sting's bacon. The Stinger was locked in a mini steel cage by the four horsemen and he needed rescuing. Out came Robocop to Robo help his Robo pal as Robo fans celebrated in the Robo stands <laughs> and WCW surely patted themselves on the back for thinking they just earned Orion Pictures a tidy sum. Instead, the angle was roundly criticised by viewers and people feared the character might return for some actual in-ring stuff that'd kill off Ric Flair's stable for good. That didn't happen, but Robocop's tie-in <laughs> did become stuff of legend and show up in worst of lists about WCW and pro wrestling generally forevermore. <laughs> JR probably didn't go and see the flick, presumably. Number two, Vince McMahon's special egg. The team behind oh, Dwayne yeah, Johnson's this. Netflix movie Red Notice repeatedly paid WWE a shed load of cash to cross promote at Survivor Series yep. 2021. That's why a beaming Vince McMahon arrived at the building clutching a priceless golden egg, one of the treasures from the film, and WWE stars were forced to act mm -hmm. amazed. Ridge Holland's awestruck reactions <laughs> were particularly enjoyable. Later, Sir McMahon claimed the egg wasn't a prop from some movie. It had been gifted to him by The Rock and was worth $100 million. And after that revelation, it went missing and the hunt was on. Vince what was furious. Egg, Various bro. stars scrambled to find the thing for a reward and wrestling fans wondered why they were supposed to care about any of this. It didn't need to make sense. WWE had already pocketed a substantial sum for yeah. a ring to show off the egg at all. So their hokey hunt was background noise to company tills a ring in. And it made for some horrendous TV too. Wonderful stuff. Number one, zombies invade WWE. Yes, I was correct and it was number one. Oh, yes. It's a 10 out of 10 list. I was correct. It was number one. As it should have been. I was open. I was like, he got to put this on here, right? They got to put this on here and they did. Oh, yes. Feels good to be correct. <laughs> WWE and devour the Miz. Here it is, people. The undoubted kingpin of take the money and run cross promotions in yeah. wrestling history. And a reminder that WWE will do anything to make cash. Apologies in advance if you'd somehow managed to eject this from your brain since mm -hmm. it happened. I know I did. Damien Priest beat the Miz in a zombie lumberjack match when various extras, including former favorite Scotty Too Hotty, dressed up as oh, the wow, undead at that. WrestleMania Backlash 2021. This was a tie in with Batista's. Army of the Dead movie, and it was downright horrible to witness. Horrible. At one point, the zombies even devoured Miz as the announcers wondered if he'd make it out of the Thunderdome alive. Then, Miz showed up on TV yeah. soon after like nothing had happened. The match was genuinely torturous to watch and made you wish you were being eaten to death like the awesome one. So, now you can go and try to forget this horrific thing all over again. Now, go and enjoy a Cat Awful. Mountain Dew, some golden scrambled eggs, and a side of zombie. Bye bye. Yeah, no, nah, that, that was awful. It deserved to be number one. I'm so glad that was number one because it was awful. It's one of the worst things, cross promotion, that WWE's ever done. And I hope they don't ever do it again. No. But comment down below. Let me know some other cross promotions for... It don't even have to be just WWE. It could be WCW back in the day, AEW, any other, you know, wrestling co uh, company that you can think of that did some type of cross promotion and it just came off cringe when you saw it. You're just like, I get they're trying to make money, but good God, this looks awful. Let me know if it wasn't listed in this video. But I appreciate all love, support, road to 150K, and I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.